All right, so people are asking me how to update Ray's 128 gigabyte image. What you're gonna wanna do is actually boot into emulation station. You do not wanna be in a track mode. You can exit a track mode and type the word emulation station, or you can go to the main menu and boot into emulation station. You're gonna wanna go to this menu that says Retro Pi. Go ahead and uh, click on the Retro Pi menu. First thing you wanna do is make sure your machine, your Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet. You should either use Wi-Fi or plug in it with the ethernet cable. I'm pretty sure we're already connected to Wi-Fi, so we should be connected. If you have an IP address and you click show IP, we get a 192. This is an internal network on my house. So it's, it's uh, non-dynamic, so it'll be changing. So I know I have internet access, so I have an IP, so I, you can set that up. There's plenty of videos on how to do that. Just make sure you have internet connection, right? Once you have internet connection, I'm gonna go ahead and load back into the screen. You wanna click on RetroPie Setup. Go ahead and click on B. You can either do this with the controller or a uh, thing. If you notice, Ray's image is pretty out of date. He's on version 401. As far as I know, as of today, they're on 410. So the first thing you wanna do is update the RetroPie scripts. Are you sure you wanna update? Hit yes. This will now go onto the repository and get the latest scripts. Once it has it, you hit OK. It's going to update. Boom, you got the latest scripts. Now, see, we're on version 4.1.5. It was just updated three minutes ago. So what you want to do is you want to update all installed packages, which will update the currently installed package if, if it's available. This will probably actually take a long time because Ray has literally all the emulators installed, so it's going to go through and update all the emulators. So I'm assuming this is probably going to take probably 30 minutes to maybe an hour. So it's gonna, again, this is gonna go out and make sure you have the latest version where you did that. So it's gonna update the hooks and it's gonna go through the system and update. And it's gonna say, do you wanna update your OS kernel package? I have a backup of this, so I'm really not too worried about it. I'm gonna say yes. So we're starting the update. It's gonna go out to GitHub and get all the new, all the new scripts, all the new codes, all the things that have been changed. So this is over Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi in my house is pretty fast, so it won't take too long, but if you want it to go faster, I definitely recommend plugging into an Ethernet adapter just because it's probably your best bet to get speed-wise going via Ethernet if you can avoid Wi-Fi. So what this is going to do, it's going to go through and say, hey, I want to update my OS. What's new? It's calling out. It's like, oh, I need this and this. And it's going to go through all the libraries that are going to be upgrading. You'll notice it's upgrading all the different main libraries, the Raspberry drivers. It's 127 upgrades. It's going to be 186 megabytes of data and now it's going in and grabbing each of the different ones and you can see their size it's grabbing from the repository this is actually uh really well done on the retro pie retro pie people put a lot of work into this even though this is ray's image he's still using the the retro pie development team they've done a great job of setting up the repositories and making this pretty painless to upgrade or to you know, add in an experimental drivers, etc. The Raspberry Pi community in general is, they're, they're just downright awesome. As you can see guys, the install has finished. It took about, I'd say about 20 minutes or so on the Wi-Fi to install. Just let it run. It's gonna do its thing, you don't have to press anything. When it's done, you wanna go ahead and hit OK. And then you'll notice we are now on version 415 and everything is up to date. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna go manage our packages. So as you know, you have more than a few options here. You have core packages, which is the core OS's. You have your main packages, which is the main OS and you have your optional package, your driver package, and your experimental packages. So if people are interested in fixing the Virtual Boy, these are the optional packages that are installed. It seems that a few of them aren't working correctly on Ray's 128 gig image. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and see how we have the different ones here. You're gonna wanna scroll down until you find the one that is for Virtual Boy. We're gonna... There, Virtual Boy. So you need the LR Beetle slash VB. It's optimized port for the Virtual Boy emulator. So you go in and click install from binary. Uh, people always ask me, what's the difference between installing from binary and installing from source? So the binary install, 
the binary thing that's included in the RetroPie, the source will get it from the sort GitHub. It really doesn't really matter which one you get it from. So we just update it. It's installed now, and notice we just ran the update. So we'll go ahead and update it from the source as well. You can run both. It's really not going to mess anything up. It, it will install. That one didn't seem like it did much, so I went ahead and did it from the source. So this is actually going out to the source directory and getting it. So if the first one doesn't work, try the second. And as you see, the first one did not go out and work, so now we're using the second. It's going to work. But make sure you don't click remove, so now when you're done, you're just going to hit back. And now it says installed. See how it didn't say installed before, and now it's installed. And then for the other ones, we want to go and fix the other ones that aren't installed. So this is the MSX and two. This one's actually not installed. So I'm going to go ahead and do install from source. And this should fix the issue with that as well from them not launching. So you're going to have to go in and kind of fix a few of the ROMs that are just, um, for one reason or another, just not configured correctly. It's pretty fast. So now it says install, we're gonna hit back. Once you're done updating your Pi and all your scripts and you also installed any of the optional packages and extra emulators you want, go ahead and go back to the RetroPie menu and you should see restart in a track mode. When you click this, as you can see it'll right here, it'll switching to default system and rebooting. So not only are you rebooting into a track mode, but you're also setting it as your default boot. So from now on, when you turn on your Raspberry Pi, it is gonna go straight to the display menu in a track mode. Okay, we just updated the Pi. We also installed the new MSX emulator. There you go. Now it should work. Let's boot it up. Perfect. Would you look at that? Virtual Boy works now. After the up updating your raise 120 gig image, the Virtual Boy will work. You have to make sure you install the packet. If you're into red pixelization, this is the game for you. Wow. <laughs> I thought I jumped on it. Okay, let's look. Wow, this game's pretty fun. It's actually running really well. It's running better now that it's been updated. It's, the track wheel's moving smoother. It's not getting lagged up. Typically if I hold down like this too long and then I let go, it wouldn't have been able to start showing the preview so soon. There'd be a little bit of lag between when the preview starts and it's just on it. Really fast like that, boom, boom. If I hold it for a really long time and I start going between letters. Oh, there's not that many games for this one. <laughs> Let's do one where you have more games. This one also doesn't have a lot of games. Like Game Gear. See, now I'm going by letters and I just stop. And it already starts. And like when I press over many times in a row, it seems to be a little more responsive as well, going between the menus. By the way, a little shortcut, if you don't want to go through all the menus, you can press D, D on the uh, keyboard. If you have a keyboard plugged in, and it'll take you to the menu here. So there you have it. That's how to update Ray's 128 gigabyte image. It will not brick your image. You just need to follow those instructions and update. It will run smoother, not only in the game mode, but also some of the games perform much better. This is a must do as far as uh, having a huge improvement on Ray's 128 gigabyte image. I also showed you how to do the Virtual Boy and the MSX to get it work. The other one that people have issues with is Famicom. The Famicom, you actually have to go into the Pi and go into the BIOS folder. You have to actually add the Famicom BIOS in order to get that to work. Once you do all these things, you're going to have the latest version of Kodi, the latest version of RetroPie. All the emulators should be working, and 90-95% of the games should work as well with the Raspberry Pi 3. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you could, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.